the Nürburgring, the most feared racetrack in the world, and the ultimate test for man and machine, and the only place on this earth where you can push your car to the limit on a public road. But entering the most dangerous stretch of tarmac on the planet comes with its own risks. So the stakes are high, but the question is, what car do we take? Well, it's got to be the Jaguar F-Type SVR, which I rebuilt from a crash damage example in my own garage. What could possibly go wrong? So now I've done one lap round here previously and done one lap in this car earlier today, but I really do not do this car justice because this is one of the fastest cars I've ever owned and I cannot put it through its paces properly one bit. The only man who can drive this car properly is someone who wears shoes like this. Yes. <laughs> Misha. Hey. So this is Misha. If you don't know him, he is the king of the ring and YouTube's most established Nürburgring content creator. And he's well known for giving cars and their passengers the ride of their lives. I don't know. I think that's a bit dodgy, mate. Okay, Misha, show me what you've got. Are you all good? <laughs> Have you ever driven an F-Type on your channel before? No, never. So I'm super excited that we have even the best F-Type. Or, or is the best the, the, the uh, Project 7? We'll just say, no, no, this is the best the, one. This, this is the best uh, one. Yeah, definitely, yes, yes, definitely okay. the best one. Okay. The brakes on this, I'm going to pre-warn you, on the road, not the best brakes in the world. Uh -huh. There's an option for ceramic brakes on this car. This one doesn't have it. Uh -huh. So that's all I'm going to say. All right. We'll have fun no matter what. Yeah. We've also got probably the, the less reliable. Push your logo. Just blur it. Ah, uh, yeah. Blur it. Wait, wait. Blur it. Everyone, look how good it looks. Yeah, just blur it. I blurred it for or you. Or change the hue. <laughs> oh yeah. Or pink. Black and what white. What color do you want it? Pink. Bla black and white. Pink. Pink. pink blue, blue. Green. Orange. Yellow. Cyan. What the hell's that? Yeah. Right. Let's get on with it. Right. Wish me luck. Why do you reckon there's no F types here? Or no, why do you reckon you've never driven an F-Type? Uh, no, it's not really popular track car for whatever reason. No, it's not. <laughs> do you want loud mode? Of course we do. So yeah, then we have... Uh... Down on there is dynamic, which ah. I think makes it, might make it permanent rear wheel drive, not sure on that. Uh -huh. um, makes it a bit stiffer mm. and stiffens up the steering a bit. You know what that one does. <laughs> yeah. How much talking do you like to do? I like to drive, but <laughs> if the if the car is good, I let the car do the talking. But I, I can have a conversation during the lap. I have, I have no issues with that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So both of us are now strapped into the Jag with no driver aids turned on and Misha scans his card to allow us through the toll onto the Nürburgring. This car is my most prized possession and I've got countless hours in rebuilding it and the last thing I want to happen here is something to go wrong. But it's nice to see that at least Misha wasn't nervous. I'm a little bit worried because I haven't got a shit yourself handle. Ah, well. I'm just gonna have to shit myself. <laughs> so it stays in manual if I just like press it. Yeah, so it will stay, it. yeah, it'll, it'll bounce off the rev limiter, it'll stay there, so. Okay. It's... Sounds good to me. Okay, we made it on the track, it's on track mode, uh, ESC is off, everything is off, uh, let's proceed. Uh, shifting point is like seven. <laughs> so I'm not sure in that mode if it's in rear wheel drive or if it's in you know a little bit of four. Yeah, I think it's rear biased. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. That doesn't sound good. Did something fell up or something? Got no idea. Mm, interesting. We have definitely power loss. Yeah. Maybe there's a boost, well, it's super, I don't know. It didn't last long, did it? No. <laughs> I guess it doesn't pull as much as some of the Maybe we've um, done an intake pipe. Maybe that's just cracked. Could be. And the brakes is not doing as it should. They're not braking. <laughs> no. So maybe something with the, with the vacuum. Yes. Yeah, the, the, the boost, like the, the whole brake booster is gone. There's like no... Oh, really? Yep. So, wow. <laughs> well, we cruise back home, we can talk about the weather. Wow, that was the best corner I've ever had. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's, that's brilliant. Well, at least now Matt can say that he overtook us. I don't know Maybe. if he will. <laughs> Until now. I'd be interested to see what that was. 
Hopefully not something expensive. Embarrassingly then, the Jag has broken on the Nürburgring in the hands of Misha and this has left me in a real predicament because now I'm stranded in a different country with a car with reduced power, next to no brakes and I have no idea how I'm going to continue with the road trip and get home. So how bad are the brakes? They've gone really hard or...? Yeah, they're just super hard, there's okay. like no brake boost. You hear about your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Matt said it's called Green Pancake, but I don't think that's right. Yeah, it's, it's just pancake. Oh, just pancake. Green pancake, yeah. pancake. <laughs> Well, that was probably the least dramatic lap I'd say I've ever had. What about you, Misha? And the most anticlimactic. Yeah. <laughs> we were expecting brilliance and got absolutely nothing. So we've just pulled up back at Apex. We're going to see if we can find what the problem was. And I'm really praying it's an easy fix because if it's not, I could end up stranded here. And what I really needed at this point was a good mechanic. How good a mechanic are you? None. Well, I can't see anything straight away that's blatantly obvious. I really can't see much. So I'm going to go and take a swing up to ring spares, see if we can get a proper look done at this because there's no way I can drive this home like it is. But Misha, thank you very much for attempting to do a lap in the SVR. Maybe one day we'll actually get a car which we can do a full lap in because so far I've not had much luck. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. One day, one day. Well, we'll look forward to it and it will be brilliant. But that day is not today. Not today. But thank you very much for your time. And the I'll weather is good time. though. The weather's beautiful. Yeah, so, so yeah. Can you enjoy that. Yeah, exactly. I'll sunbathe or something else, but I appreciate it. Awesome. Right, let's go see if we can get this fixed, maybe, yeah. in a bit. Well, that is unfortunate. It seems to be my luck. Every time I go on a road trip, one of my cars breaks for some reason that isn't even necessarily my fault or nothing that I've even touched, but I suppose you can't control these things. You've got to do your best to get them sorted on the fly. So Misha's passed me on to someone called Richard at a place called Ring Spare. So it's about a 10 minute drive from here. So I'm going to take a toodle up there and see if we can, fingers crossed, get this sorted and get me back on the road. And although I might seem quite cheery here, it's really, really hard and stressful when you're stuck in this situation because you feel completely helpless when you're in a completely different country. It does seem to be becoming a bit of a recurring theme for this me breaking down and it is getting a bit tedious but hopefully this time we can get the Jag sorted. So I brought it to Ring Toys and we are having a quick poke around it now. It's a little bit tricky to decipher why these two things have gone at once. As I said there was a bang when we put a foot down on one of the straights and then had reduced brakes and reduced engine power and it seems to be a little bit confusing why those two are tied together on this car. Why is it always me? Maybe you walked under two many ladders maybe yeah maybe i've got some bad karma yeah getting crossed on staircases yeah. and stuff maybe it's maybelline <laughs> <laughs> maybe this video is sponsored by car vertical <laughs> so here i am left high and dry with a broken car and that's exactly the situation you don't want to be in and to help avoid that you want to know the full history of a car you're about to buy so say for example you're looking for the perfect ring toy to smash laps of the nurberg ring faultlessly you probably want to look at buying a porsche but not this one and i know this because of the car vertical check that we did. As you can see here, this car's got a green tick for theft, a green tick for odometer, a green tick for financial and legal status, but an amber warning light for accidents. And when you scroll down, car vertical even shows you photos from the auction site when this car was crash damaged, so you can see exactly how bad the damage was. All of a sudden, the perfect Nurburgring car doesn't look so perfect anymore. The car vertical's theft report shows that the car is not wanted to stolen in any country and also hasn't been stolen in the past either. But it also shows you that the mileage all checks out because we can see that on the odometer graph. And then finally, the damage report. This gets even worse because we can see the car's been damaged twice and once marked as a category S, meaning that it is structural damage. So to check out your car, a car that you're potentially about to buy, or a friend or family member's car, go check out Car Vertical using the link in the description and discount code CHRIS to save yourself some money off your Car Vertical report. Now let's go see what's up with this Jag. Your belt snaps. Belt snaps, what, the supercharger one? Yep. Oh no, that's uh, not a good day, is it? You can just see it down there. Don't know if you guys can see this, but just down there, it's so hard to see on this car because the way the bonnet is. We have a snapped supercharger belt, which is definitely not ideal. So I've snapped a supercharger belt, which means I've got like basically zero power <laughs> oh and also no brakes. Did you snap the belt? Why have you got Misha? no brakes? No, Misha broke Misha it. Misha broke yeah, your Misha car. Misha broke my car. Oh. No click bat. Oh, you didn't get towed off. <laughs> no, it didn't get towed off. It still drives, but it like, oh. it ain't going far. Oh, belt. It's, um fix it well that's the question we're waiting to belt, find out it? it's not going to be a thing that's going to be easy to come by around here no no we're not in england <laughs> exactly there's no jaguar dealerships <laughs> and on top of that it's a weekend and we're in europe so basically nowhere's open so we're stuck stranded some might say <laughs> it's good enterprise rent a car around the corner is it <laughs> yeah but, uh, you're not going to get a belt are you probably not no so what are we going to do chris um well i think i'm going to have to you guys have to leave me behind i think you have to continue your trip and uh yeah, I don't Let's know. Let's try and get this sorted. Oh. What am I going to do, Chris? You're going to go with them. 
How am I going to do that? Get in the boot. Today we've lost a soldier, and it's me. <laughs> I'm done. I think it's going to be a problem because unless we can find something which is going to fit the supercharger and there's nothing else which is broken because I think it might have took out a pipe as well then as long as there's nothing else seized then I might be able to get back on the road but even then how long is that going to take? And also as well for Jaguar spares around at the Nürburgring Zero. Nothing. Should have brought a BMW I know, I did last time and it still broke <laughs> <laughs> But it got fixed, that's what mattered fixed. Yeah, it did get fixed. <laughs> I have seen another Jag round here uh, There was one earlier, I seen an F-Type go past Apex But it wasn't an SVR no, it wasn't an SVR, but it did have a working supercharger. Here is the moment of truth. Let's pull it in and get it on the ramp and see if we can see if this is going to be fixable. I'm praying it is because it would be nice after all of this to still make it to Monaco with the with them lot. But that may not be possible, so let's find out. So the Jag can go up on the ramp at Ring Toys for diagnosis and to see if anything else has been took out by that supercharger belt. And very quickly we find evidence of the damage caused to the supercharger belt with bits that are hanging out the bottom of the under tray. So the next thing to do is get that under tray off and then we can see better what other damage that supercharger belt has caused and why we actually have no brakes. Because because at the moment we're clueless. Well, it's safe to say we have found our problem. That is not looking good. And it has definitely took out other stuff with it because I'm seeing some pipe brackets and things. So this is where the belt should go on here and then round the top over the supercharger belt pulley as well. And here is where it is now. <laughs> Nice. So now we've found the reason why the car has reduced performance, but what about the braking? Well, we've just found this pipe here. Hopefully you guys can see that. And this would clip on to a nipple, which you can see is just already in there. So unfortunately, I think what's happened is the supercharger belt's come off, snagged that, pulled it, and then snapped the nipple with it, which is not good. So now we've not only got to find a supercharger belt for a Jaguar F-Type in Germany, we've also got to find a vacuum pump as well, because that is what the nipple is from. And then the guys at Ring Toys go about removing the intake pipes to make sure nothing else is damaged, but on the face of it, there isn't, but there may still be more when we come to fixing it. Now you might think that sounds really unlucky, and in some ways it is, but in some ways it's really lucky too, because if that had have took out more parts than just that nipple, then I could be in even deeper trouble, and I could have ended up having coolant everywhere, or over the track which could have caused the track to be shut and then cost me a lot of money in terms of repairs on the car and also in fines from the track too so Although it's bad, it could have been a lot worse. That's always one thing that we can take a plus note from. And I do also just want to point out that this is in no way, shape or form any fault of Misha's at all. It's just really bad luck. That's exactly what it is because I drive this hard regularly and haven't had a problem with it. It's been one of my most reliable cars up until this point. But it's just sod's law that as soon as Misha hops in the car on the start straight at the Nürburgring that this happens. It's inevitable sometimes, it's just bad luck, so I want to make sure that that's clear. You can't get the vacuum hose off. Depends what the other one. Yeah, the nipple snaps the vacuum hose. It might be sleeveable, but it's like it's quite small. Yeah, if not, then probably yeah. unlikely we have to buy that as a single part and you have to buy the whole, the whole pump yeah. thing. Expensive. Perished. Annoyingly, I know where all these parts actually uh, are available, but they can't sell them. Uh, well, can they can they be stolen? I asked this, but no. <laughs> There's no way of getting them out. Getting them out. And he said they, in principle, they're all the same, and the engines are all the same. Yeah. And he said 100% they've got them there. This is an ordeal. Sometimes when life gives you lemons, you've got to make lemonade. <laughs> So we've upgraded, some might say, from the Jaguar F-Type SVR into the Clio, I don't, the Clio Cup, is it a 197? I don't even know what it is, I think it's a Clio Cup 197. And it's been slightly track prepared by the guys at Ring Toys, and now this is going to be our chariot to Monaco. With a total of some horsepower, front wheel drive, and it comes fitted with a pussy magnet. A man uh, yesterday uh, told me if I buy a car, I must buy one with a pussy magnet. Is that me? 
<laughs> I was born to have this car because it's blue. I didn't even look. I don't choose blue cars. Blue cars choose me. It's blue tops, blue everything, mate. It's blue. You're blue. Double D, double D. Now, I know some of you might be thinking this car is perfect. Well, it nearly damn is, apart from one thing. This gearbox, because every time I go from third to fourth, I don't know if you can hear it, it's crunching quite nasty between gears. So I still have to nurse this car all the way there too. It'd be bad if I broke two cars, wouldn't it? Second time today. So armed with our new baguette of a car, we trundle across Germany, making it down to Munich to the Motor World Museum, which is where we stayed the next night. And by the way, this is a wicked little place because not only is it one of the biggest collections of high performance and luxury cars that you can go and see, it's also a hotel where you can park your car on your balcony to your room. So we spent a bit of time the next morning checking out some of the cars and also potentially finding some future projects too. And once we were done with that, we then hopped in the cars to our next stop on the trip was a little town in Switzerland called Andermatt. And as you can see, the Clio fit in perfectly with the Swiss landscape. But all joking aside, the Clio did sensationally around the mountain roads of Switzerland, especially the downhill bits. But the way this car had been set up for the Nürburgring means that it worked perfectly on these mountain passes too. A little too well, in fact. Should we try and overtake these boys? <laughs> now you'd think that driving a Clio across Europe compared to a Jaguar F-Type would be, well, rubbish, but I've been blown away by this Clio so far. It's surprised me so much and I can see myself very quickly falling in love with it. Except for two things, crunchy gearbox, fourth into th very crunchy. What's the other thing? The radio. Oh yeah, the radio. This is our radio. It's the IO. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Um, I think it's uh, Kesha. <laughs> Don't stop. Turn it up. <laughs> the speakers up, dude. But we pushed forward to the town of Andermatt where we stayed the night and got some sleep. But I got a message the next morning about the Jag. Green boys, hello. Richard, it's Chris with the uh, F Type. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Are you? Yeah, not bad. Good, right. Here is my plan of action. Let me know if this works for you. I am currently in Switzerland. I'm thinking you're about six hours from me, I think, on the maps. I'm potentially yeah. thinking of driving back up to you today to pick the Jag up. Fingers crossed that it's fixed and that I make it in time. Do you think that would work with your schedule? Should be. I mean, it's uh, the next car I've got onto the ramp. Okay. So, assuming, assuming the parts fit uh, and work, um, we should be good. Okay, wicked. I'll get showered and leave right now. We'll yeah. hope for the best. <laughs> I should get to you for 4.30. And you're going to drive straight back in or? I think so, yeah. <laughs> 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 you got to do what you got to do, I guess, isn't you? How big's the bill looking? Is it looking painful or not too bad, do you think? Yeah, I can't tell you until we... Uh, it's always painful, right? It was, it was a bill. <laughs> True that. All right, then, buddy. Well, I'll get sorted, uh, get left as soon as possible. Hopefully, I can make a bit of time. If any car can do it, that Clio can. <laughs> yeah, it's a good car, right? It's good, yeah, it's wicked. Yeah. All right, then, brother. I'll, um, I'll see you as soon as I can. Right, Much love in a bit, bye. So here we go. I'm leaving possibly the nicest hotel that I've ever stayed in in Switzerland and leaving all of those lot behind to hopefully change the Clio back for the Jag. But it's not going to be an easy task because I've got to get from here to the Nürburgring, which on maps says it is six hours with zero stops and no traffic and no delays. And then six hours back. So that's 12 hours straight driving. The time is now 11 o'clock. So that means without any stops or delays or anything, I will get back here at 11 p.m. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so I set off from Andermatt back to the Nürburgring on possibly one of the most stupid amounts of driving I've ever done in a day. 13 hours is not an amount to be laughed at. I could not get out of the back of my mind that if something goes wrong with the Clio here, I am left stranded in the middle of Europe on my own. Yeah, I don't know what's Right, two hours down and I'm in France finally. Now I've got to get from here to Germany and then to the Nürburgring. We've got four hours of the trip remaining. I'm yet to stop. I'm thinking I'm going to try and see if I can do this with zero stops. One tank of fuel that was about 350 miles. It's going to be tight, but well, actually, I'm going to stop once because I want to fill the tank for Richard, who has lent us this car at the end of the trip. But I'm going to do that at the Nürburgring. So I'm going to try and do the rest of the trip on one tank. I'll check back in with you later. Always one of the struggles of 
traveling Europe in a right hand drive car on your own is toll booths. I'm now 108 miles away from the Nürburgring, which means 108 miles away from my Jaguar F-Type. I still don't know if it's fixed. My phone is out of battery. I've got a spare, luckily, which I have been using for maps, but that doesn't have my phone number on. So, fingers crossed the car's fixed. Fingers crossed we still make it there in good time before the place shuts at five o'clock. And we've still got to get back to the guys down in Switzerland. Oh no. This is not looking good. I don't know if you guys can hear that. When I've got the car on partial throttle, it's really misfiring and not sounding happy. I've got to be, well, stranger, I've got to be flat out for it not to misfire at all. And I don't think that excuse would wash with the police somehow. I swear my look just gets worse every single trip. <laughs> if I don't laugh, I'll cry, I'm sorry. Yes, I finally got it. Oh, there it goes again, there it goes again. I don't know why I'm happy. Oh my, that doesn't sound good at all. I don't know why I'm happy that the car's been... It's going again now. It's, it's properly on it. I don't know why I'm happy that the car's misfiring, but at least you guys can see it. And Well, I'm now 70 miles away, and I'm really hoping I can just nurse it the rest of the way there and get the Jag back without too many troubles. The only speed the car likes doing is 100, so it's lucky that we're in Germany because I can legally do that here on these autobahns. So I'm in the nightmare situation where the Clio is on the brink of a breakdown where I have no tools or parts to fix it. The only speed it wants to do is 100 mile an hour. That's where it runs on four cylinders. So that's exactly what I did all the way down the autobahns, all the way to the Nürburgring. And luckily, we just made it. So we can pull back up to Ring Toys and I'm praying at this point that the Jag is fixed and that the bill isn't going to be too massive and that I can carry on with my trip. Because if not, that complete six hour drive would have been for nothing. But now it's time to see whether the car is fixed, and if it is, how much that's going to injure my wallet. Repair and supercharger bill, brake vacuum, um, which is 3.4 hours, but that's also including bleeding the brake system as well. Yeah. So I've just bundled it all into, into one, uh, and test driving the car, naturally. Um, workshop materials, 21 euros, and then the replacement car, I've just done it at a flat rate of 250 as opposed to anything else. 73460. 73460. So you can pay directly online or you can pay by cards, whichever. Finally made it here in the Clio. It's about getting on for 6 p.m. The Jag, thankfully, is fixed. We managed to find the parts just in one day to get it sorted and back on the road. A new supercharger belt and just changing over the plastic bit, you know, the plastic nipple which snapped due to the supercharger belt coming off. So that, in theory, is ready to rock and do some more mileage. I want to thank the guys at Ring Spares for sorting me out last minute and getting it done in good time. These guys do repairs, so if you do break down at the Nürburgring, you know where to come. But also as well, they hire out some of the cars. And I believe you can even, if you wish, drive the legendary Clio, which has saved my skin. So if you do want to do that, you know where to go. So I'm officially back on the road, just done the first fill up in the Jag. Probably one of a few to be fair, because I've got quite a lot of miles to cover. I'll be honest with you, normally in this situation, I'm way closer to home than I am to those guys. I would probably just go home. But the problem is Matt, the filmer, who is Matt's filmer, losing the name, has no other car to go in without me so for him solely for him just so he knows if he ever watches this which he probably doesn't that's the reason i'm going back otherwise i probably would just go home if i'm being honest but now time to knuckle down in the jag hit the auto barns and get some miles under the belt and that is exactly what i did i absolutely sent it through germany and france to get back to switzerland as quick as possible progress is solid we are now one hour 45 minutes away from the hotel where we started off the day we've got an eta at the moment we're around quarter past 11 and this is the first fill up after the first, so it's the second fill up basically. So I don't think things are going too badly really, it could be worse. I'm really questioning whether life is trying to test me right now. Deep breaths. Here's why. I've got 10 minutes left, or about 15 minutes left anyway, and I've hit standstill traffic, it's not moved for like 10 minutes, and I'm just so tired. <laughs> I just need my bed, man. <laughs> 800 miles later, in one day, finally made it. I'll catch you in the morning. So the Jag is now back in Switzerland, where it belongs, with me, with Matt, and we're glad to be back in this rather than the Clio. I honestly it? can't express how disappointed I am to see the Clio go. Uh, <laughs> the Clio was is, good, the Clio was banging. Yeah, as a passenger it was more comfortable. Oh, uh, well, luckily for you, I've been and got this just for you. Chris always tries to make me happy. <laughs> he's, he's a good That's friend. just what I do. <laughs> now before we wrap this video up, there's one more thing that we need to do because we're in the perfect place to go for a drive. 
It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, we've not had done this video yet. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Tony. <laughs> it suits you, that Tony. It suits you. <laughs> now we're going just a short drive up to Ferkel Pass, which is widely known, similar to. Stelvio. Similar to Stelvio as one of the best driving roads in Europe. So we're about to find out. We've done Stelvio, now it's time to do Furka. That Ferrari is the craziest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> this channel but oh, look at that views on views on views <laughs> My ears, my ears have popped so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I can't it's hear it. Do you hear it when you're in the front? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear it when you're about 10 cars behind. There he is. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. You didn't, and I literally did nothing. So this is where myself, Nico, and Matt were all dragged to the police station by the Swiss Rosers. I'm sure we're gonna have a few clips that we're gonna nick from the other guys until it's a fair bit filmed. Maybe we can recover some of it, maybe we can't. But the boys have just filled up with petrol and there was a car park nearby for coaches with loads of space. Matt decides to have the great idea of licking some donuts. Which did look amazing and like I say, and sound even better. Nico then followed suit. And as I pull into the car park to also join in, didn't even get the chance to, I see a police car pulling in and we get told then to go to the police station. We all get our pants pulled down. We have one finger in each. We all got tarred with the same brush, all got a 650 euro fine and kicked on our way. So it could have gone worse. We could have had the cars seized and it could have put our trip to an end. But in short, we're back on the road, on our merry way, on down to Monaco. Matt's got some bits he's gonna film there. So I'm sure all of you guys are gonna go and watch that video. And for now, if nothing else happens to the car. Literally second, second time today. Police again. Uh, this is gonna be it. So thank you very much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe if you're not already, and I will catch you next time.